Hey everyone, and welcome to part 5 of the Trail Ruin Excavation in Minecraft. My name is Daskalos, and I'm a professional archaeologist and certified interpretive guide. On the last episode, we expanded on the road. We also found the end of it, and exposed the buildings around the tower. Today, we're going to keep plugging away and expose the rest of the road and hopefully the rest of the buildings as well. As usual, I will discuss some aspects of archaeology as it comes up, but you already know what to expect. So, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's just get into it. Well, this is interesting. Normally I'd hit the bottom of the structure and get two more blocks of stone and stop, but this is weird. What should be sterile, i.e. stone, is not. It's giving me dirt again. So there must be more stuff. Let's keep going. Oh, that's why. That's, uh, yeah, that's quite the basement. You know, let's just plug that back up. The first thing I want to talk about today is dirt. Super exciting, right? But the one common thing every archaeologist is looking for in an excavation, believe it or not, is dirt. Specifically sterile dirt. And the reason why all archaeologists look for sterile dirt in an excavation is because it shows that you are at the bottom of whatever it is you're uncovering. But at this point I'm sure you're asking, what is sterile dirt? Sterile dirt is kind of what it sounds like. It's dirt that lacks any cultural material. Now I realize that as I bring things like this up, it tends to generate more questions than answers. Well, welcome to archaeology. <laughs> but seriously, to understand what sterile dirt is, we need to understand what cultural dirt is, or rather, soil. Now archaeologists sometimes aren't very creative in naming some of these things and that's generally a good thing. A lot of the labels or terms for things are very simple but descriptive. Cultural layers or soil or deposits, whatever you want to call it, all share the same thing no matter how you phrase it. These are deposits of cultural material and cultural material could be anything from the obvious artifacts to things as simple as ash layers in a fire pit. These cultural layers are simply layers of dirt that show human impact. What? 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 
In this game, it seems that the developers chose gravel and dirt to signify cultural deposits, hence why there are artifacts in the suspicious gravel. So at this point, you're probably wondering what I meant when I said that sterile dirt is the one common thing that every archaeologist looks for. Well, sterile dirt, like mentioned earlier, doesn't contain any cultural material, which means that this layer would have been the ground that ancient people walked upon or built upon. But just because you find sterile dirt doesn't mean you're done digging. Any archaeologist worth their salt in the field knows once you hit sterile dirt, or let's say a floor, in an excavation, you're not necessarily done. Gaps in habitation will often present themselves by layers of sterile dirt, so when you hit a sterile layer, a good archaeologist will pick a spot sort of out of the way and dig a very small pit down. If it remains sterile, then the archaeologist knows that that is the end of the excavation, that's as low as they're going to go. But if they hit a cultural layer, the excavation continues, and this will go on until they hit solid sterile. In this game, it appears that the developers decided that sterile dirt was going to be represented by a stone block. The reason I say this is because stone is under all of these structures so far that I've found. And stone is the material that is layered on top of these structures. Because after someone leaves a habitation and the site is left untouched, sterile dirt moves in to bury the structure. At least most of the time. Out here in the American Southwest, a lot of sites are found because they're exposed. This means that there's usually a concentration of artifacts on the ground. Okay, now we're going to do some more focused excavations. I marked out some units that were going to clear all the way down to the structures to expose a little more. I got some right behind me here and I got some right over there to expose some of the road. Pretty easy stuff. I think it's six units all together. Now we're just going to quickly take them down. Alright, let's do it.
But in a lot of other places, you'll have to do what is called a shovel test pit. And it is what it sounds like. You basically just dig down and sift through the stuff and see if there's any artifacts. Because a lot of those sites are buried. Though not nearly like this one in this game. Okay, so since the road continues into this unit here, we're going to have to take this unit down as well. But I don't think it goes that much farther in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of take it off layer by layer vertically and keep going back and probably not even have to excavate the whole unit. But here, I'll just show you. All right, so I was right. Well, actually, no, no, I was wrong. It didn't extend into that unit, but it did end there. So I'm glad we only took down that one vertical layer rather than take down the whole unit as there was no real point in taking down the whole unit. So at this point, I think everything is pretty much excavated. Yeah, yeah, everything's pretty much excavated at this point, with exception to the insides of the buildings. So I think what we're going to do next episode is clean out the insides of the buildings and clean up the rest of this terrain. I don't think there's any kind of archaeological precedent for the whole Minecraft terraforming thing, but I don't know. Maybe there is. I've never come across it before. So anyways, I'm going to leave you with some glamour shots, and until next time, I'll see you then. Thank you.